Hi, I'm Dave Chung, Chief Medical Officer of Joint Pediatric Enterprise of Children's Health and UT Southwestern Medical Center. And welcome to the In the Know video series. We're here today with a guest, Dr. Megan Griffith. She's an assistant professor in the Department of Pediatric at UT Southwestern and Children's Health. She's a cardiologist, and welcome. Thank you so much for having me. Well, tell us about yourself a, a bit, as well as uh, what drew you to Children's Health and UT Southwestern, because you're relatively a newcomer in our uh, enterprise, right? Yeah, I just came here six months ago. Uh, I am actually originally from Colorado, and then I've been on the East Coast for the last 10 years doing training. And it sounded like a really interesting and exciting opportunity to come and bring pulmonary hypertension here to Children's Health. Great, so when you talk about pulmonary hypertension program, what does that all entail? It's a little bit of a niche specialty. Hypertension is high blood pressure, pulmonary is the lungs, so it's high blood pressure in the lungs. What it really does is it causes the right side of the heart to fail and makes our kids very, very sick. And it can be a comorbidity of a lot of conditions that we're treating here, like premature babies or kids with complex medical needs or uh, kids with congenital heart disease. So bringing that specialized care to those patients, I think really fills a need for them. Great, so in the heart center with mm -hmm. pulmonary hypertension program, are you growing programs to draw patients from in the region or nationally, or how common is this condition? It's a very rare specialty. There's very few programs in the United States. Who's all involved with managing kids with type pulmonary hypertension? We're very much take a multidisciplinary approach. So I'm actually part of the PAC team, Pediatric Advanced Cardiac Care, which treats our heart failure, uh, cardiomyopathy, and transplant. A lot of those kids develop some form of pulmonary hypertension, so I'm working closely with them to treat that. I work very closely with neonatology uh, and see our kids in the NICU. I uh, work closely with PICU and especially um, the ECMO team, because many kids who, if they get very sick from pulmonary hypertension, uh, will end up needing that kind of advanced support. Then I work extremely closely with our pulmonology colleagues who are seeing many of these kids long-term outpatient and we're co-managing a lot of these kids together. So it's not only an inpatient care, but the chronic longitudinal follow-ups and management. Absolutely. I actually think about pulmonary hypertension more as an outpatient issue, mm -hmm. which I think is a different perspective. Most people think about it as something that they're seeing acutely in the ICU, and these are some of the sickest kids in the ICU, so people remember them. But what I like to think about is that, yeah, this kid is sick in the ICU for uh, some period of time, we make them better, and I get to see them in clinic, uh, running around, smiling, living their best life, and I will follow them for many years, if not their whole life, until I'm transferring them to adult care. That's great. So as you said, it's a quite rare disease. Yes. But having been in the East Coast, most of your post-training mm -hmm. uh, tenure, what, what was something special about this place that you told yourself, and hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to Dallas and help build a program? I realized just how much opportunity there was here. The opportunity to build a program and bring this care to children who otherwise are having to travel many hours to get pulmonary hypertension care. Uh, you know, five, 10, 15 hours to be able to get their pulmonary hypertension care. So I wonder if you can kind of share with me a bit about those areas of research and innovative uh, programs that you're overseeing or you're building. Yeah. You know, we're starting from the ground up, so there's so much opportunity for us to be innovative and do new things. As a cardiologist and being part of the Heart Center, I get both the support and resources of the Heart Center, but also that's a huge portion of our population. Nationally, about 50% of children with pulmonary hypertension have congenital heart disease. But there's all sorts of pulmonary hypertension in congenital heart disease, especially some of our single ventricle patients who previously haven't had a lot of advanced pH therapies. The single ventricles are a group I'm really excited about. There's very few people really looking at pulmonary hypertension in single ventricles, but we have a great center to do that. Um, we have a fantastic cath group. Our cath slash MRI suite um, is 
revolutionary and one of very few in the country. Uh, and then our heart failure transplant program is also fantastic. And then we also have additional support from Dr. Reddy and lymphatics. All of those are pieces that help our single ventricle population. And pulmonary hypertension is one, one more piece that's really important for these kids. I want to kind of delve into a little bit more about your proteomic study yeah. for biomarkers. <laughs> I wonder if you can kind of elaborate on uh, the sort of partnership with UT Southwest and Children's Health, because in many ways, that's kind of what sets many of our physician investigators and translational investigators to be able to do what you do. It's a really ripe environment for research. Uh, we have the patient population, but we also have the infrastructure and resources to make that happen. We have the ability to develop our own biobank and our own repositories here to do prospective trials on the work that I've already done. And I'm, I'm very excited to be able to do that going forward. Why is that and how is that important for patient care? Well, that's the way that we bring new revolutionary treatments to our patients. That's how we move the bar forward. This is an orphan disease that until a few years ago, everybody said there was no answer for, these, for this disease. And many people still look at these patients and say, there's no hope, why are we even trying? And I firmly believe that yes, there is hope. Uh, and we just need to study and learn more and we'll be able to improve things. Uh, and outcomes for this disease are already getting better. We're getting new treatments already. And being right on the edge, being both in the clinic and also in the lab, allows me to start to understand this on a molecular and cellular level, and then bring that knowledge to my patients. Right now, we're still opening our clinic, but I'm usually going around and seeing all of our consult patients. We work, of course, closely with all the other services. So I'm seeing patients usually in the NICU, the PICU, and the CICU, sometimes pulmonary, um, and uh, then any other help to other people. And then I will usually, after sitting down and writing notes, sit down and open up my research. And I, I do less basic science hands-on in the lab nowadays. I do more analytic work. So all of our biomarkers, we're looking at new ways of trying to understand them and make them interpretable to a clinician. And the way we're doing that is complex modeling, um, artificial intelligence models to try and take a huge amount of data and make it interpretable so that the output is something that a clinician who's busy rounding can look at that and say, okay, I understand that. This patient is high risk. This patient is low risk. This patient is this type of disease versus that type of disease, and therefore I should use this medication. Is that where the future of pulmonary medicine is headed? I think so, absolutely. Uh, all of our new medications are very much targeted against the molecular and cellular changes that are happening in the pulmonary vasculature. And in order to properly target those, we need to better understand what's going on. And we need to be able to understand that on a molecular level, looking at proteomics, metabolomics uh, for each individual patient and being able to target and say, this patient has this kind of protein change, this medication targets that protein change, I'm gonna give them this medication and really getting to a personalized medicine approach. What, what more resources or things that you need? We are rapidly building and rapidly expanding. We've only been open for six months, but uh, we already have a lot of business. Look very soon for our clinic to be wide open and able to take referrals from our community partners. From a research standpoint, I've been working on this biomarker risk model for a few years, and I'm hoping to be able to test it prospectively uh, in the relatively near future, and then hopefully at some point and have it be useful for patients. Because when I'm looking at a piece of data and using it to make a decision for uh, to recommend something for a patient, I always think to myself, okay, this isn't just a patient. This is the patient in front of me. This is somebody's child. This is somebody's sibling. Uh, I need to make sure that I've got everything right for them, that I'm thinking about every different contingency, that I'm really recommending the most appropriate treatment for them, and then following up and making sure that it's correct. So that level of rigor, when you take something from the lab to the bedside, it needs to be at the level that my clinician self is able to say, yes, I can give this to my patient and I will feel comfortable and good about recommending it to them and their parents and their family. That's, that sounds wonderful. Share with me about um, 
your experience in six months uh, being a member of the Heart Center. What, what has it uh, been like for you? It's a very dynamic and very exciting program. Um, it's going through a lot of growth right now. Our division chief, Nicholas Madsen, is fantastic and is another, he's one of, another one of the reasons that I chose to come here. The subspecialty programs and really sub-subspecialty programs, things like lymphatics, which mm. goes very closely with pulmonary hypertension, where the, uh, there's two programs in the country to get that. The resources, our, um, our cardiac imaging group is just absolutely next level, like nothing I've ever seen on in any institution I've been in. Uh, so, you know, the, the support and resources that they provide uh, and the expertise that they provide as colleagues is fantastic. So it's, it's an exciting place to be there. It just feels like there's so much opportunity, so much dynamism, um, great colleagues to work with, and everyone just excited to try and make things better for the kids we're looking after. Anything else you want to share with me about the, your program? I'm just so happy that I can be here and excited to take care of these kids. Uh, these are, again, some of the sickest kids in the hospital when they come in here. and. There's so much opportunity with new innovation to really improve things for these kids. Well, we're so happy that you are here and we look forward to many, many great things from you and your program with regards to the pulmonary hypertension program. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you.